I know we talked on Monday about what Jack Tuttle did in coming in in the Washington game. He provided the initial spark. Michigan scores on three straight drives for the first time all season. Then they fizzle out offensively. The turnovers were killer. But you come out of this game, despite the loss, feeling like, okay, you know who the quarterback's going to be now. You know that he's an upgrade from Davis Warren and Alex Orgy. I think that part is is really clear. But how good is he going to be? How much of an impact can he have on this Michigan offense that desperately needs to get something going beyond running Kalel Mullings and at times Donovan Edwards? Um, Anthony, your thoughts on what Jack Tuttle can do. And I, I do think it comes at a good time where he – he got healthy enough, and we talked to him on Tuesday night. Basically didn't get any practice reps until Washington week because he was recovering from an injury, You know, not even on scout team or anything like that, he said. And then you know, he gets a taste of playing. Then he gets another week to get healthy, get more chemistry down because he wasn't taking starter reps in practice leading in. Now he will be, and you can kind of build around him. Yeah, there's a path forward here, and – just going by what we saw on the eyeball test the other night, like he is this team's best shot at having a, maybe not even a balanced offense, but something respectable to where when a team loads the box, Jack Tuttle's going to get the ball out quickly. And I, I think for a lot of these guys, um, you know, their receiving numbers are probably going to tick up second half of the season. Um, you know, I think in these first few weeks here, you're going to kind of have the element of surprise on your side only because um, you know, these teams don't exactly know like what Michigan is going to be offensively. Yeah, they had to throw a little bit on Saturday night, but they were down two scores and had to throw to get back in the game. And, um, you know, there's not as much of that film on Tuttle yet. Now, the thing with him that I'm concerned about is the durability. Like it did seem like to me, and I've gone back and watched even an, an additional time, since uh, since we did our Monday night show, some of those passes lost zip on them as the game went on. And I don't know if that was a fatigue thing. I don't know if that I, – I, I'm not even going to – I don't know what to attribute that to. But, you know, there was no path to where – because this is the time of year you start thinking about what is this going to have to look like if you're going to go win a game in Columbus or if you're going to – I mean, the tests are earlier than that now. You know, you got to go play at Indiana. You've got Oregon in a couple weeks. So, like, what is this going to have to look like? Uh, not we can say it with hindsight, being twenty twenty. There wasn't a path to doing that with Davis Warren at quarterback. There wasn't a path to do that with Alex Orgy at quarterback. Um, you know, for all intents and purposes, I think that Michigan. I don't think you know banking on Tuttle being their guy coming into the year might be a little strong. I think they were going to let this battle play out, but you know, not knowing what we know now. It kind of seems like he never had a chance really in the offseason to factor into this battle at all. And um, the timeline, when you, when you hear what their timeline is, it makes sense. When you hear that he didn't even have a full week of practice until last week, it makes sense. Um, so to me, I mean, it's it's a complete it's a completely different look. Now, it was similar at the end when quarterback turnovers cost you an opportunity to put a game away. But I, I, I have less of a concern with that moving forward with him because – because of the reasons that you saw early in the game. I mean, it was as snappy as it had been. It was as clean as it had been. The decision-making was crisp. I, I think those are things that will only get better with more practice reps, with more time, and kind of throw him into a hostile environment, too. You're, you're in a tough place to play, down two scores. I thought he answered the bell pretty well at the end. You know, what happened in the end was, was, was unfortunate, but uh, he can, for the first time, I feel like, he can get better from this and that there is a path forward for Michigan here. I'm not overly concerned about the turnovers either. Although Jack Tuttle has been somewhat turnover prone in his career, seven touchdowns to seven interceptions. And in 2021, when he played the most football, and again, that was a long time ago. So he certainly you know, at least had more experience and understands the game of football better, might even be a better player physically. I know he's coming off the injury. So, you know, maybe that'll be the case more in a couple of weeks once he's, you know, even more healthy. But uh, in 2021, two touchdowns to five picks. Um, I have, you know, watched some of Jack Tuttle in those games. And, you know, there were some errant throws in there. Uh, but, it, you know, again, it's been a while since then. And you have to take into account the fact that he played against four or three top 10 teams and then also number 18, Iowa. Um, 
only a couple passes in that Iowa game, but you know, 52 attempts in, in a loss to Michigan State. You know, there's not there wasn't a lot of talent on that 2021 Indiana team. In fact, they were terrible. So uh, definitely a different scenario here, although he is going to need guys to step up around him. When you look at the receiving core, Samaj Morgan leads the wide receivers right now with 13 catches for 78 yards and a touchdown. That means he's on pace for 26 catches, right? You know, a little over 150 yards in the regular awesome. season. It's just, it's not enough. And two of your top three receivers are tight ends. Colston Loveland has 29 catches compared to 13 for Samaj, who's second. Nobody else over 10, nobody else at 10 receptions. Donovan Edwards is right in there, third on the team with nine receptions. Like they need more out of the entire offense. You can talk about balance between run and pass, but you also need to be balanced in who you're giving the ball to, uh, to a certain extent. Um, and so I do think there are things to build on with Jack Tuttle at quarterback, but he's going to need help. He's going to need better pass protection as well. Um, but I think this offense can be serviceable enough. And if they can stop putting the defense in bad positions, right? The defense has not lived up to expectations, but they've also been put in, in poor spots here. The offense has turned the ball over 12 times this season. It's one of the highest counts in college football. Um, they only had allowed seven, 17 points despite giving up a bunch of yardage in the Washington game until the two turnovers that led to short fields and Washington scores 10 points in the last two drives on drives of 26 yards and 32 yards. So I'm not saying that the defense is, is not at fault, but if this offense can be a little bit better score on, you know, whatever percentage more of drives and not turn it over, I think you can be competitive in, in pretty much every game. I think so too. And you know, something about, the first half of this, I mean, this, when it's that bad, it challenges everyone. It challenges the entire offensive coaching staff. And again, for as much crap as the defense has gotten, I'm sure we'll talk about them. Like mm -hmm. those guys have been on the field way too much. And it's because you have an entire offensive line that struggles to pass block. You've had a quarterback, you've had quarterbacks that can't play quarterback, which is a problem, right? Uh, you have wide receivers that, you know, we hear all the time, like, what ride, what ride receiver is going to come to Michigan with the offense they run? Well, you know, you had two pros at wide receiver last year and Roman Wilson, Cornelius Johnson. And again, I get that's not, it's not Marvin Harrison Jr. It's not Devontae Smith. I get that. But, you know, they're not talented enough there. And that's why you see, like, I feel like we've seen every scholarship wide receiver and then some um, that's not a true freshman kind of get some run because nobody separated themselves there. This is a week where I think guys need to reset and start to separate. Um, and that includes like, I I've been very disappointed with Tyler Morris. I thought he's a guy that could have stepped in and been what, you know, Ronnie bell and, and Roman Wilson were uh, Samaj. I, I think they're getting him the football, but when the bread and butter plays, you can run with them are the bubble screen. Cause you can't do anything else that lends itself to what the one game. He had three catches for six yards and that's not necessarily his fault. Um, so, like, I, I think right now I, I have questions about the talent still. Coaching, certainly. I mean, I think that uh, these this is a big six weeks for Kurt Campbell and and Ron Bellamy, in my opinion. I, I think that even Grant Newsom, I think, deserves some criticism just for by virtue of the fact that the head coach comes out in the preseason and says, as long as I'm here, we're going to be good on the offensive line. And, and they were a Joe Moore honorable mention or some kind of watch list thing today before we recorded. And I, I, that's on reputation. And a lot of what Michigan wants to be is on reputation. But the facts are, is that nothing, it's not been good enough there. So I think when you look at the offensive side of the ball, everyone sans Tony Alford right now, I think can do a much better job than they have from coaching, from, from game planning, from players executing. Cause I think a lot of their issues are from an execution standpoint. Um, you know, I just don't know that like until until Jack Tuttle came in and thank God for him, because I don't know if the infrastructure supports anyone else being to step in and do that job. So I, I think there is talent there still. It hasn't flashed as much as I thought it would, but everyone's got to be on notice right now because two weeks in, three weeks in, I get it. Chemistry issues, young team, whatever. Six weeks in, you kind of start it kind of starts to take a feel of like you are what you are. And 
Um, even with the drop off that we expected this year, it's been a little more stark than than it needed that it needs to be. And uh, I think everyone has to wear that. What you referred to is the Joe Moore Award honor roll midseason. Twenty two teams named to that. So Michigan apparently in the top twenty two of offensive lines. I think they can thank Kalel Mullings for a lot of that. I think part of yeah. What people look at when it comes to offensive line play are a couple stats. One, rushing yards. Rushing yards average you know, per carry, per game. Michigan relatively high there because, especially per game, because they've had to run so much. And people look at how many sacks have you given up? And I don't have the number in front of me. I'll pull it up here real quick. But Michigan hasn't really dropped back to throw all that much, especially during the, the points in the season when – Alex Orgy was the quarterback, and uh, so eight sacks allowed this year. Um, that ranks 51st in the country, but a ton of teams tied, right? I mean, it's like you know a, a couple teams with just a few allowed, but a lot of teams with four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's really pretty good um, in t- just at the number, but the pass protection has been really bad. So these numbers are very deceiving, Anthony. Um, they also just allowed pressure on some of the other times when they haven't allowed sacks. So... Uh, That, you know, you have to take that into account. It's tough for these guys on the committee to watch every single offensive line. I think sure they kind of know who the best few are. But when you're trying to whittle it down here to 22 at the midseason point, you got to include some ones. And, you know, like you said, reputation and a couple of key stats play into it. And there you go. And Kalel Mullings and Donovan Edwards certainly uh, certainly help there. But I think that they one of the reasons why they beat USC is because, you know, not because they got anything out of the passing game. It was because they ran the ball pretty well. They broke off some long runs and because they didn't turn it over and they ended drives in in kicks, whether that was a punt or an extra point. And stick to that formula. But if you can just be a little bit more dynamic and, you know, a little bit more is even significant with how, you know, little production you've got out of the passing game. But if you can do that, then I think you can put up points in some of these games or at least enough and put your defense in better spots to you know make sure that they don't do what happened in the in the fourth quarter last week with you know getting outscored 13 nothing a lot of that on short drives let's move over to the defense what is holding this defense back from from being good part of it is where the offense has set them up but part of it's the pass defense the coverage has not been good enough outside of will johnson the safety safeties has struggled there Jair Hill has been up and down and struggled there. Amir Hall was out in the Washington game when they really needed him. I think he would have probably gotten a decent amount of run. I don't know how well he would have done, but it would have been another option or a button for Wink Bartendale and and Lamar Morgan to push. The the linebackers have had some of their issues in coverage. I think that's been cleaned up a little bit in recent weeks. The pass rush has been pretty good, dominant at times, but not consistently so. Josiah Stewart has been one of the best pass rushers in the country. So I think the defensive line gets an A grade so far. But your thoughts on on this defense right now and, and where they can go? I'm seeing a lot of individuals making plays. Like Mason Grant makes plays. Kenneth Grant makes plays. Everyone on the defensive line has made a play. Um, at times, you know, Ernest Hausman makes a great play. An interception last week. Um Will Johnson has, you know, a couple, you know, a couple of those pick sixes this year uh, that have really been huge for Michigan. But a, a defining trait of these last few Michigan teams was that that cohesion, the communication on the defensive side of the ball. And I don't, I don't see a whole lot of that, especially on the back end right now. Uh, something that's been troubling to me is, yes, you lose Rod Moore, but you've got guys like Makari Page and Quinton Johnson and Will Johnson who have been here and. At times, like still doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like those guys always know where they need to be. Um, I think Will's played pretty well. I think even Will would tell you that he could probably play better. And at times he's been out of position. Um, you know, had that pass interference against Washington. But I think I'm just struck by, and I don't know if it's a schematic thing. I don't know if it's just a lack of communication, lack of press. I mean, lest we forget, no Rod Moore, no Mikey Stain were still back there. And they're not walking through that door. Those guys damn near got everyone where they were supposed to be on their own. But I think the thing is, is that, you know, you don't, I don't know if they're necessarily playing together. 
right now. And I don't know, like, I don't, to me, that's not a culture thing. I just don't think, you know, so many elite defenses know exactly what the dude's assignment is next to them. In addition to their own assignment, in addition to where they need to be, if this happens. And I just think there's a lot of confusion back there at the moment. Um, You know, there have been times where I've known the past defense has taken a step back, but I didn't realize that they were like 133rd in yards per completion. And I think bottom five in, in third down conversions or something like that. It's been, it's been really bad back there. And again, I, I don't know if it's the switch from the scheme because I don't care what anyone says the wink Martindale defense, just because it was a Baltimore Ravens defense is not what they're running the last few years. Um, I don't know if it's, I mean, Steve Klink scale, probably a bigger piece of the puzzle that leads to some of that too. But again, it's six weeks in, you got to talk about the guys that are there instead of the guys that aren't there. And the guys that are there aren't doing a very good job right now. It's interesting. The, the is it players or coaches? I think it's obviously both, but when you don't have Rod Moore back there at safety, that's going to hurt the corner play as well a little bit in terms of what you can do to help the other guy out opposite of Will Johnson. And then the corner that isn't getting as much help as maybe Josh Wallace did last season isn't as good as Josh Wallace. Plus then you add in, like you mentioned, the lack of connectivity, the the lack of organization that has kind of seeped in as well. And then it's kind of a recipe for not being a consistent defense, a defense that does get stops, strings some together, has really good stretches dominant individual plays like you mentioned but the end of the game you allow 24 to minnesota you allow 24 to usc which i thought was fine uh you allow 27 to washington in a game where you did settle in for a while but then it it falls apart at the end of course short fields played into it you look at the stats michigan's 115th against the pass in terms of passing yards per game 259.8 per game yards per attempt though is the one I turn to a little bit more. It's only 6.4. That's 39th in the country. Much better. Um, the problem, and, and really part of that, the yards per game, is that nobody can really run on Michigan. I know Washington had some success. Texas did have some success. But really no one else had any consistent success. And it's a run. You're going to have to throw. So that inflates those numbers. But the most alarming one, is that they've allowed 71 pass completions of 10-plus yards. That ranks 133rd in the country. The big plays have been an issue where this is kind of a bend-don't-break defense. That's kind of what the the scheme is set up to do. But they're bending a lot, and they're breaking at times as well with some of the big plays. Washington comes right out and and throws right on them right away. So they've got to figure that out. Um, Let me ask you this before we move on. Who's the best player on Michigan's team? Who has been the best through six weeks? Offense, defense, special teams. Like one guy, though, but any any position. Yeah, I think it's Mason Graham. I think he's been a constant for them. Um, I think you make a case for Josiah Stewart. I think you can make a case for Kalal Mullings. But uh, to me, it's, it's Mason Graham. I think he's the best player, too. If I was to change the question to most valuable, I'm going Kalal Mullings. Though he has been, mm. they, they're probably two and four without Kalel Mullings, right? They don't beat USC, they don't beat Minnesota. Um, I think they, you know, they probably could have figured something out against Minnesota, I guess, but they lose to Texas. They already lost to Washington. He has been a godsend. The fact that he came back and that he's a running back right now. I, it's tough to it's tough to argue it, honestly. I mean, without Kalel Mullings, this team is there's at least one of those games they don't win, right? Either the USC game, the Washington game. Um, they definitely don't beat USC without him. Oh, absolutely not. So, I mean, to me, yeah, I, I think that's it's it's interesting, right? Because running back can be such an interchangeable, you know, thing that. Uh, even some people would say that you know, it doesn't really matter who's back there. It has mattered who's back there for them. Um, and the fact that that he did get that run late in those games, especially the USC game, it, it, I stop short of saying save your season, but 
certainly was was an injection of life that they needed because those first three weeks were were rough. They were. So, uh, yeah, I, I have no issues with that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially Orgy making his first start there. Um, tough to believe they win that one without him. He's been... He's been awesome, and, and look, when Donovan Edwards is a little bit more of the hot hand like he was on Saturday night in Seattle, then he gets just as many carries as Kalal Mullings, and I didn't really have a huge problem with it. I actually, the only problem I had was that I, I thought they maybe should have ran it a couple more times there in that second half when it felt like they were they were having some success, um, uh, you know, opening up some holes and really, you know, executing some run plays.